What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with a look at the new Age of Sigmar gameplay rules. Now, these are the rules found in White Dwarf 75, or you can download them from free from Games Workshop's website. And of course, there is a ton of War Scrolls to check out. I mean, this is chaos, because chaos is my jam, so I wanted to check that out. And obviously, on the video, we wanted to talk about that as well. And of course, the very first model in the, kid, the Warriors of Chaos War Scroll Compendium is Archeon himself. I probably said that wrong. People say I say Archeon wrong, but you know what? I'm from the South. I talk funny. Sorry, y'all. That's what I do. <laughs> so we're going to go over that. We're going to go over what a War Scroll is, and we're going to go over the four-page rulebook in here. And I tell you what, there's a lot of haters out there. I'll agree. A lot of people have put a lot of time and money into the Warhammer Fantasy Battle hobby, and I can see where they would be upset. Sometimes change is a good thing though, and we're not saying we're getting rid of 8th edition. You can play 8th edition all you want. You can play end times all you want. But I'm just saying this is a new way to take some of the minis already in your collection and have some fun with the new set of rules. And I think at the end of the day, when you see uh, how much fun the people are going to be having at game stores and at venues, and you see how much fun you're not having, that I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to realize maybe this whole social contract thing and you know getting along with your opponents and just bringing the hobby back in general is a good thing it's a good thing for the hobby it shows it gives us growth we're not going to be hemorrhaging hobbyists we're not going to be losing people to basically turn it into you know the older some of the older games where you got these old crabbity players and you know you, you just see them and they're just all miserable and you just look over where they're playing and they're just miserable and you don't want any part of that like i want to have fun I want to I want to drink beer. I want to eat pretzels as long as they're gluten free, and I just want to have some fun and put some toy soldiers around the table. And that's what Age of Sigmar is all about. There it is no rhyme or reason. I mean, there is a little bit of rhyme, rhyme and reason to it, but just in you know a common sense kind of way, I feel like. And you know what? I think overall we're going to see tremendous growth in this hobby because of this rule set. And I hate to say it, but I could I I could easily see down the road 40k going the same way if Age of Sigmar is the smash hit success Games Workshop wants it to be. So that being said, let's take a closer look at it and go from there. I'm joined once again by Night 12, my subject matter expert yes. on the Age of Sigmar. It turns out I have a lot of Fantasy armies. I think you have all the fantasy armies. Actually. I do. I actually do have all of them. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I wish I had a fantasy. I got a hell cannon. You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. I'm a hell cannon. Um, so this was issue 75, and of course it came with the four-page uh, Age of Sigmar rule set, which uh, you know, it, while it's not as, or as robust as some people would like, it still seems pretty cool to me. Like as I was talking to some friends about this, like. If you're looking for more, this is it. This is the rule. This is it. There's four pages. And, so, and War Scrolls. If you can't various, figure various out how, War Scrolls. If you can't figure out how to play this, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. We're, we're going to help you as much as we can to get to <laughs> right Baby now steps. in this video. Yes, definitely. Um, so obviously we don't have the box set. We don't have the models to show you exactly how it works. But we will give you the conceptualization that you need to you know, kind of figure out if the game's for you. Now, obviously, we're not going to have all this stuff because all these War Scrolls, they basically released the whole, every book you know, uh, with 40, 20 to 40 pages each in it. At the same time. At the same time. So it's like, it, it was a flood of information, kind of trying to like catch up, like try to read yes. it. Like, like I said, I do have all these armies. So um, we're, I nar I've narrowed it down to like my favorite armies. Um, but this, the, the rules here are, are going to be pretty brief. It's not that much to read. So no, it's not. But we'll give you some specific examples. I feel like because there are some things in here that why, that you're gonna that you're gonna notice are similar to some other games. I'm just gonna you're gonna notice some things in here that are completely different from what they used to be. So let's just uh, jump right into it because there's a lot to talk about. I feel like so in order to play, you must first muster your army from the miniatures in your collection. As you will see in some of these war scrolls, they don't really care. Like there might be a restriction on how many models, but they're like, hey, whatever. If you don't have the minimum field whatever you got so like it's it's kind of like a more of a set of guidelines yeah, than guidelines like, like you try to t no just really take what you want <laughs> <laughs> this this is a very casual laid-back game uh, I feel like you know a lot of the win it all cost players are not going to enjoy this sort of format because it lends to you know that social contract that we talk about so much on the on um, you know the long war and spiky bits you know about interacting with your opponent you know not having to feel badsy you know you're gonna spend three hours playing the game you might as well enjoy it um, and it's it's a lot about bringing a hobby back you know it's it's a really enjoyable experience so the more units you decide to use the longer the game will last and the more exciting it will be typically a game with uh, 
a game with around 100 miniatures per side will last about an evening. Now we laughed about that. Like, yeah. what, what, what is, is an evening? evening? Right. So because once I get drinking, that's pretty much <laughs> that could be like 10 hours. There's the evening. There's the um, evening. But no, it's 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 basically it's actually I've, what I've heard and what I've seen. It, it actually goes about the same as as like a maybe a. 2,000 point fantasy game okay. uh, depending on how big you go but you really you like you said you can play as big or as small as you want right and like hey I only brought this case of minis let's just let's just play with some stuff hey, real quick hey, let's Rob. play a lunch hammer yeah, let's we, play a whatever we have 40 minutes to play you want to knock out a game yeah right, we'll let, we're going to literally play with 20 miles per second well I have hell cannon well you can, you can bring that sweet it's there. I'll, I'll meet, you, meet you in my place. <laughs> no doubt. Right, so the models are described by World Scrolls, which we, we, we printed some out just to kind of break them down and show you guys how they work. Obviously, head on over to Games Workshop site because all of the code, all the free. old army books are there. Free download. <laughs> they even have one for all the training uh, pieces, which is really cool. And Forge World supposedly today is developing a bunch of them for the Warhammer Forge stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that kind of stuff. A unit, uh, models fighting units. A unit can have one or more models, but cannot include models that use different War Scrolls. Obviously, that's their attempt at faction kind of thing, right? Yeah, so basically, you know, all of your Warriors of Chaos are in a unit. Like, you yes. don't want three Marauders and ten Warriors of Chaos. Or some Lizard Men in there. Not, just just going to get weird. Keep units, units, keep the scrolls, are all together. Yeah. Yes. Um, a unit must be set up from the be set up and finish any sort of move as a single group of models with all models within at least one inch of at least another model from the unit and if anything causes the unit to become split up during the battle it must reform the next time so it moves. this basically sums up unit coherency you know 40k little books it takes a little more time it's to two do inches it. this is one inch yep there you go no more blocks of troops nope. one inch no coherence. more ranks there is kind of a thing for ranks, and we'll talk we'll talk about that as as we get through it. But but yes, very different from Warhammer Fantasy. A lot of these things are very different. You just gotta wrap your head around it. Tools of war. In order to fight a battle, you will require a tape measure and some dice. Got it. No way. Oh, <laughs> it's so true. Um, <laughs> distances, and this is a big one right here. Distances of Warhammer. Age of Sigmar, I'm measured, measured in inches, okay, fine. Between the closest point of the models or units you're measuring to and from, you can measure distances whenever you wish. So pre-measure allowed. A model's base is not considered part of the model. It's there to help you let them, help the model stand up. So don't include it when measure distances. Boom! Like wow. Thank you. They literally clear cut. You can model for advantage if you want. They don't care. <laughs> Make it look. I'm literally telling you. You can. If you're starting to think competitively. You're doing it wrong. Yes. If you are actually going to glue all your spears of your freaking elves straight up, so people can't measure to the spear tips standing straight out. This game is not for you. You will not enjoy this game. Yeah. Literally, like, you know, make your models, paint them up, have some fun. But they're saying you measure from the model, any part of the model. Right. It's just the bases are just there to help them stand up, guys. Um, Age of Sigmar uses a one-sided dice, obviously stuff we've all heard of. You can never re-roll a dice more than once, and re-rolls happen uh, before modifiers are applied. So that's a very important distinction because there's a lot of wacky stuff that happens in here. No doubt. So don't forget that. Battles in the Age of Sigmar are fought across an infinite variety of exciting landscapes and mortal realms. Uh, nine mortal realms of, of Sigmar. From uh, desolate volcanic plains to treacherous sky temples to lost jungles and encyclopedian ruins. The dominion of chaos is all prevailing Oh, pervading. And no land is left untouched by the blood of war. These are wildly fantastic landscapes. This is why we play this game. You know, jungles, mountains, dwarven holds, fantasy, crazy fantasy ass shit. This That's is literally fantasy in, in a nutshell. Like, they're, they're bringing it all back to the table. They want you to get that in your head. Yes. Uh, now, they discontinued a lot of the terrain pieces from the old Warhammer fantasy because you don't really need those, those sort of things here. Now, what they want you to do is basically for every 2x2 two two square, which is very convenient because that's the same as a realm of battle, yep. uh, for every 2x2 two two square, they want you to roll two dice and apply the result here of how many terrain pieces. So, on average, you know, you're going to get one terrain feature, you know, rolling to 7 on 2d6 generally. You're gonna get one train feature for every two by two square. So if you have a four by six table, generally you'll have six pieces of train. Easy peasy. Sounds good. Generally, on average. You could just say that and you would be good to go and you can roll dice for other things later. Um, mysterious landscapes, so mysterious terrain is kind of a thing. You can apply any of these results here, kind of depending on um, you know the result. Oh, no doubt. This is fancy rules you guys remember. This was kind of from fantasy. They, yep. they had all that's where it started. Yep. They had, edition. Basically had all that. So if you want to play with it, you can. Not required to just pull, pull no whatever you want. I mean, you set it, set it up in the beginning. If you don't want to, you know, it's totally optional. So you've got you know fundamental changes to bases, fundamental changes to uh, you know uh, basically units, units, and then you've got you know terrain. So that's kind of cool. Then we get into the actual battle itself. Now they want you to divide the table uh, equally. Is that is the only qualifier? 
equally. So theoretically, you can do this. Theoretically, you can do this. Theoretically, you can do this. Theoretically, you could have it down the middle like that, diagonally. Whatever you want to do. Based and they get like Rob is saying, these are examples. Yes. You really, literally just make sure it's equal. Equal yes. sides play. And you know, you might not even play on a four by six. You might play on something bigger. You might play on something not bigger. It's hard to say. So you know, just this is obviously a flying casual kind of game. <laughs> to, oh, no, this, to quote yeah. Han and Chewie. The definition of flying casual. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of cool to see. Then you've got a general. You have to have a general. Always have to have a general. Okay, got it. Um, and he gets a command ability, kind of like Apocalypse Forty K was. They kind of did this like. Um, traits kind of thing, command abilities, so it's kind of cool to see. Glorious Victory. Now, this is how you are going to score, um, I, I guess, basically win. This is the way to, quote-unquote, win games of Age of Sigmar, right? Yes. Um, so, um, basically, a victor can immediately claim a major victory and the honors of triumph that are due to them uh, if they basically have more shit on the table. That's it? I mean, they, literally, the, it, this is a fight. I'm not going to water it down. It's a fight to the death. Yes. It goes in to describe how if you, you weren't able to finish the game, which means there's models left on the table, it's percentage based. So like, how many models do you have left? Yep. How many models do I have left? If you can, yeah, if you can't finish and there's still models on the table, you can apply a you know a victory basically um, based on percentages, so minor victory and things like that right here. So th again, this is a four-page download available from Games Workshop site. You we're not going to get super into it because we want to cover a lot of stuff, but this is very easy concepts. I feel like oh no doubt. So if you guys can't wrap your head around that, like who killed more crap? Yeah, basically. Um, then you got sudden death victories. So if a player has more models than the other player by a third, you can do these cool things where you basically. Um, um, kind of, it's kind of like a forlorn hope kind of thing, but kind of not. Now, this is where I love this. Like, mm -hmm. the, there's sudden death victories in 40k. We laughed about that. It's like two sentences. And yeah, basically, you know, if you table them. Yeah, basically, it's table them, or you know, they quit. Like that's it. Oh yeah, that's true. That, that, that's the two 40k. Now, mm -hmm. this one actually gives you a list. So, like, if you're yeah. outnumbered because you're playing a guy that brought all of his toys. Well, still hey, want to play sometimes. Oh, right? still want to play. Like, yeah, oh, I, play. I've only got a thousand points. That's okay. Yeah. We're going to give you this this chart here. For example, seize ground. Pick one terrain feature in enemy territory. Have at least one friendly model within three inches of that feature at the end of the fourth battle fourth round. Fourth battle round. Victory. Yeah. You win. He has a million models left, and you got one dude standing next to this tree. That's a that's an epic showdown that you'll be talking about for you know many Forever. years. Like victory, they, that is literally forging a narrative. Yeah, I mean it's that's cool stuff. That's why we play this shit. That's like, so, great. All of these are fun. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean all of them are cool. Uh, maybe you know the one where you have to last six turns, at least have one model left in six turns, kind of like uh, you know Saving Private Ryan or something. Run, literally run and hide. Like <laughs> yeah. you're running and hiding. Like there's and there's a lot of cool mechanics in the on these War Scrolls. Like you're gonna start. I guarantee you're gonna have fun if you play this game. Just try it out. Oh yeah, I mean if you. It, you gotta put the old version of fantasy aside and be open-minded with your fellows and you will have a good time and if you know there are those whack players they're gonna try to game the system and come out you don't have to play with them just don't play with them they'll get alienated in their own right and then they'll walk away you know and they'll play something else but when they see all the people on one game one side of the game store hooting and hollering having a blast, having a blast man. you know they're gonna be like man maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should play that Age of Sigmar tone it down though yeah seriously maybe, <laughs> maybe I need to be a better person and have, you know get out there and, and do stuff I mean I, it's all about sportsmanship, y'all. That's uh, that's what these games all about. Okay. So then we get into battle rounds. Um, so, oh well, obviously, if you achieve a sudden death victory, uh, then you win. <laughs> you, oh. get a, you get a free major victory. You get a major victory. And yes. We're triumphs. Like so, if you won your last game, like you're playing. Oh yeah, they stack. They stack, which is kind of neat. Which literally, I'm playing in my basement with Rob, and I beat Rob. So the next time I play anybody, I just let them know I won my last game, and you can get uh, a triumph. You know, it gives you some cool stuff. You know, or it like, could stack in a tournament, I suppose. Ba basically, add one to your general's wound characteristic, mm -hmm. or you know, reroll all the failed hit uh, for hit rolls. So, so reroll to hit, uh, combat wide for one phase, like all these little things. So uh, trust is a big thing. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, like I won uh, my last game, so I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna use this stuff. You got any proof? I always win. Oh, okay, that's fair. I believe you. <laughs> Seem like a trustworthy dude. So battle rounds. Uh, now this is where it gets a little weird. You will notice that these phases are very similar to Warhammer 40k. You got the hero phase where you use your heroic ability and or cast spells. Um, heroic abilities are conferred on the war scrolls a lot of times. Movement phase, move across battlefield. Shooting phase, attack with missile weapons. Charge phase, <laughs> charge into combat. 
combat phase, piling and attack with melee weapons. Battle shock phase, this is your leadership kind of phase. Yep. Test of bravery. Yep. Running away, models die and all that. Yep. Um, now, the very important thing to take note of is that at the start of each battle round, players roll a dice, rolling again in the case of the tie. The player that rolls the highest decides who takes the first turn in that battle round. Each turn consists of the following phases. So it's basically initiative-based kind of. This is super chess. Yes, like, it is super, like super chess. This is turn-based on steroids. It is. Uh, which I... It's a really change of pace to, to, to Warhammer. Like, a lot of people... Um, so it can be a little tactful, actually. People are like, this game's simple. Well, is it? it there there can, literally is some things here that you can get good at, I promise. Yes, <laughs> there, is, there is some things that require attack, so keep, it, keep an eye on that. Now, the hero phase, that's what we just talked about. It's the very first one. You can use wizards uh, to cast... Um, I yeah, guess they're not psychic abilities anymore. They're psychic abilities. They're spells. But spells. You know, you're going to cast spells. There's at least two that we know of. Yeah, there's, which is great. Like, people yeah. literally... It's like, oh, let me consult the chart. Well, there's two, no, there's dude. Two, which one do you want to do? There's two spells in the game. <laughs> um, special characters, no special spells. Yes. That's it. It's a couple so, of things. So not overpowering magic. That's, nope. That's gone. I like that. That was a problem with Aeth. Okay, so there's that. And they might have that command benefit that you want to talk about that's yeah, on no their doubt. war scroll. Um, so command ability. Apparently, every general has this inspiring presence. Pick a unit from your army that's within 12 inches. That unit does not have to take battle shock tests yet. So until your next hero phase. They're unbreakable. So they're basically unbreakable they're, in combat. They're not going anywhere. Seems good. It, it's very good. And we d didn't hit on the general can be any model in your army. Ah, uh, yes. If you didn't important. take some cool guy, literally, yep. you pick somebody. Just dude man, veteran sergeant, dude man, sergeant, just be bopping it in the like, unit. Yep, cool. Yep. Um, so command ability, we talked about that. Movement phase. Um, everybody has a set... Uh, rate of movement. Yeah, it's actually very simple, and we'll go over that when we get to the war scrolls themselves. Yeah, we'll show you. All um, that. It, pretty simple though. Like they, they simplified that a lot. And you can run now. Oh, something very important. More more areas of attack. Uh, if you start within three inches of an enemy unit, you cannot move. Uh, you have to remain stationary or retreat. If you choose to retreat, uh, you have to end its, your move more than three inches away. So keep this in mind when you're you know, going to roll the order of battle right here. Um, it can get a little tactful. And the way to do that is like, you know, um, I guess they could just kind of break and end up or something. But there's, Exactly. There's, 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 there's little slim things that happen, but basically you, you want to stay away from three inches right. out, out of uh, range of other but models. It seems like to me, you being able to maneuver your models within three inches, a more to have a more powerful unit in, within three inches and force them to not be able to do anything but disengage is a very powerful tactic. Yeah, well, they get to make one decision. They're going to yes. charge you. Or Which they're probably not going to do. Or run away. Or run away. Yes. Yeah. So, and you can kind of set up some, because a lot of people are like, well, you can't set up all these charges and things like you used to be able to. I was like, I think it's still there. You just got to be smart about it. That mechanic is, is there. It's just, it's hidden. Almost. Yes. It's definitely changed. But it's there. We just talked about it. Running. You can run just like in 40K. Flying. Um, same restriction. Uh, it can't be within three inches, but you basically can fly over stuff. You literally ignore terrain, ignore models. Uh, it, it just gives them increased range on their war scroll. Yep. So, so pretty neat. Uh, shooting phase, um, very very basic. Pick one of your units. Now, every weapon is a little bit different from uh, the way that everything used to be. Every weapon has a certain uh, way it hits and a certain way it wounds. Right. And that's it. Exactly. There's so no modifiers. You just the, roll dice. There's just roll dice. There's rolling the, dice. The models themselves don't have characteristics. The weapons oh have. Oh, my God. We should not let Kenny play this game. Kenny will love this game. Kenny would love this He's game. Gonna love He's going to roll sixes for everything. He's, He's like, like, yo, dog, what do I need to roll? He was talking to me about, like, Legends of Zelda and, like, memories of, like, going back in time, and he, like, wants to play Age of Sigmar now. So. Oh, my goodness. It's great. You can't tell him about this game. Oh. You think he'll know? He knows. Ah, shit. Shooting phase, another thing. It, <laughs> it doesn't restrict you shooting into combat, so, like, no, shoot, shoot your damn bows. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just shoot them in the comment. So it's totally tactful, I swear. Uh, charge phase. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, so uh, any of your models, uh, any of your units within 12 inches is a very specific designation of the enemy in your charge phase can make a charge move. Pick an eligible unit. Um, each model in that unit can move that number of inches. Uh, so you're doing a 2d6 just like you used to do. Um, it's random charge link, just like it was introduced in 8th and you see it in 40k. Very, very cool thing that a lot of people will miss. Like, the first model you have must finish within half an inch of an enemy model. You actually don't have to make it there. Correct. They're literally like, if you're close, you're close. You, yes. you made it. Now, this is going to get into a weird kind of uh, conundrum. Well, not really conundrum. Uh, I guess a little, a little it's going to be a little weird to see on the tabletop because technically your bases are going to overlap because mm -hmm. you're trying to get to that. The bases are not there. They're just there to hold up models. Yeah. So you're going to overlap your bases. Doesn't matter. 
They, li- they actually be- explain that. They don't care. Yeah, be careful when you move your shit, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's going to be different. It's different. I'm not hating. Uh, I'm just probably not going to put a bunch of tufts on my, you know, so I can actually put my models. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's going to be different. So combat phase. So this is this is where it pops off. Um, still very, sp- you know, it's very similar. Any unit is charged or has models within three inches of any unit can attack with its melee weapons, which are specified on its war scroll or its unit entry, whatever. Um, the player whose turns it is, and that's very specific. Whoever's turn it is has the has the power almost has the priority. This is where you get good at this game. Yes, this is uh, this guy gets to. I'm fighting with this unit strategically in my head first. Then I'm going to come back and fight with this unit, yep. and th- that's where you're going to get good. And I love it. I love that aspect. Oh yeah, it can it can get kind of uh, kind of good. So um, you just basically go through. You pick everything. Step one: when you pile and you move each model in the unit up to three inches towards the closest enemy model. This will allow models in the unit to get closer to the enemy in order to attack them. Each step two: each model attacks with all of its melee weapons and is armed with. Boom. All of them. Yeah, All right. of them. Swing oh, all, okay. your, all your weapons. Go. Right. That was easy. Now, Battleshock phase. This is a little different. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, like a, like kind of like a watered-down demonic instability kind of yes. thing, I guess. Um, so you want to be, you know, let's just kind of, there's a little bit of attack tier two, I feel like. So uh, in the Battleshock phase, players must take Battleshock tests, and that's uh, the last phase here, number six. Now, remember, you can use your command ability. Uh, to make stuff basically unbreakable. Make more of this. Yep. Um, roll a dice and add the number of models from the unit that have been slain this turn for each point by which the total exceeds the highest bravery characteristic, which we assume to be leadership, you know, the old leadership, but now it's a little bit different. Um, then they are basically removed from play. Add one to the bravery characteristic for uh, being used for every 10 models that are in the unit. That's kind of like your ranks. Yeah, there's your ranks. There's, there's your ranks. Your, that's why taking lots of guys is good. And I like how they actually explain it um, as that mo- that model actually runs away. Mm-hmm. So you remove it from play, but like these guys are breaking from combat. That's what yes. happens when they break. They don't just, they just die now. They run off the table. Yeah, they just run. So, I mean, I can see it. It's cool. It seems very simple in theory. Again, I haven't rolled any dice. We're just, you know, we're just, we're just, talking about it and in theory here so that's kind of cool so here's the attacking um you pick the target units we just we just basically talked about that um a weapon has it's basically all listed in its war scroll you know it does it hits on a specific value it wounds on a specific value regardless of who who is holding it yep so okay seems good um making attacks now this th- this is one thing I really noticed, and this is where 40k kind of falls off. I feel like there is no there is no thing in the 40k rulebook where it it always talks about attacks, but it doesn't say specifically um, combat attacks or shooting attacks. Here they make no difference. Making attacks. They make yeah. They just say make attacks, and I think I honestly think this is kind of how they feel 40k is oh, no, because no. of the way some of the rules are written. Um, so it's interesting to see them actually, ver- uh, you know, verbalizing this in a rule set here. So they don't differentiate between shooting and close combat attacks. They just basically make attacks. You roll a dice, roll a wound, save roll, if they get a save roll. That's it. Cool. Um, now, some things have rend. Yeah, um, which is basically, you know, armor penetration. Uh, and it'll tell you that on the, the yep. you know, the, the item description. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, it seems a very easy again in theory. Now, there is something called mortal wounds, which is really interesting. Um, when some attacks inflict a mortal wound, do not make a hit. Do not make hit, wound, or save rolls for mortal wounds. Just allocate the wound to models from the target unit as described above. Whoa. Sounds good, right? Yeah, that sounds now, really good. I want, I want of, things with those. There's a lot of things in, the, in all these scrolls, all one million pages of scrolls that have mortal wounds. <laughs> so, again... Yes. Does, does that sound really, really powerful? Yes. Yes. Uh, of course it does. But but I mean, I can just take a war scroll with like a hundred dudes, so yeah. I gotta have something here. So who cares, right? Yeah. Yeah. This sounds fun. Okay. Great. I'm, I'm, I like it. Just just talking about it. It's amazing. Yo, don't don't random my parade. I like this. A uh, cover. Uh, also another cool mechanic that's very easy. It's just like, hey, if you're in a train feature, hey, yeah, plus one of your saves. Period. That was easy. Okay. It doesn't it doesn't work for close combat. Again, that was easy. What you Thank you. They, they didn't take four pages to explain cover. Nope, it's just it's just a couple sentences oh, right there. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's way easier. I like it. <laughs> mm, all right. Uh, so wizards, uh, we talked about that. That's done during the uh, what the first step here, the hero phase. This is probably the if you guys hated Eighth Edition Magic, uh, uh, it's gone. Yeah. There's two spells. No more here. purple suns. You roll two d six and you consult your spell. Like what? And if you got over the casting value, it goes off. Okay. All right. And same thing to deny a spell. It's the same thing. If you have a wizard that allows you to deny, then mm-hmm. you get to one one chance to deny. 
That's easy. You have to beat my roll, basically. Okay. Okay. So we, like we roll off 2d6, basically, if I want to. Yep. Okay. That's it. You can do it once. Each of my wizards can cast something. Um, Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. That's it. What do they do? Arcane Bolt. Uh, casting value of 5. If you cast it, pick an enemy unit within 18 inches. Uh, that unit takes D3 mortal wounds. Oh, all right. D3 guys. Boom. Okay. Mystic Shield. Casting value of 6. If success successfully cast... Um, pick a unit within 18 inches of the caster, which is visible. Uh, you add one to all save rolls for that unit to the next hero phase. All right. That's the simplest psychic slash magic phase I've ever heard of. So no librarian's conclaves, no crazy, you know, Stacking. can my Eldar dispel everything on a two up? It's just, this is how it works. Is it? It's two spells. Huh. Special characters have special spells, which will, you'll see in your war scrolls in your army. They have some pretty neat tricks, but that's it. So basically, mm -hmm. no one's going to know more than three spells. Well, I can see why people are upset, because they put a lot of time and effort into their hobby, and it's changed on them. But I can also see how this scene is a lot easier to play than the way fantasy used to be, and kind of how 40k is, to be honest. They sum it up perfectly, the most important rule. Yes. Um, just, you know, You've figure it out with your... <laughs> You've seen it before. Like, yeah. yeah. Literally, if something doesn't make sense, like, if, you, if it doesn't answer all your questions in here, no. talk to your friend. Whoever yeah. you're, you're playing against. Or your opponent. And if your opponent's a dickhead, hey, maybe never play that guy again. Yeah, no doubt. Literally, like you just make make it make up stuff. Have fun. That's yeah. what the rule is. Super easy. I like this game. I, I really do. I am sad. I don't have a fantasy army right now or any. I have a hell king. I know a guy. Yeah. yeah, we will play soon. All right. So here is a war scroll. Ooh, super sexy. So this is Archeon, of course, the um, the super pimp of the ever chosen, my man, the man himself. Basically, um, we we chose him because he's a stud and we love chaos. And he was also the first one in cast mode. Yeah. It's also good. But yeah, that, that too. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I picked him. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, you, as you can see, it's a very simple layout. This is basically the, the, the meat and potatoes, as Juice would say, <laughs> of this page. Um, it tells you everything you need to know about him. Right. His, his characteristics. His characteristics. There's only four now. You're used to all the, you know, if you're playing 40K and Old Fancy, there's a whole page of... So uh, bravery is like leadership. Bravery I don't leadership. Have, No weapon skill, no ballistic skill. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. Easy. His, his bravery is 10. He has eight wounds. Eight. That seems like a lot. Oh, no doubt. His movement is 10. He gets to move 10 inches. Oh, okay. He has a three up save. Work. That's it. There's his profile. Okay. What is so you're What's he armed what with? What is this? This is literally what he has. He has the Slayer of Kings. Huh. Range. It's a one inch range. Which it's a it's a combat weapon. Um it, it ha that weapon itself has four attacks. It hits on two ups, it wounds on three ups. Okay. It, rending is negative one, so negative one to your save. So it does three. Does three damage. Ah. So that's you start to see, oh he has eight wounds, yeah, but there's a lot of people, monsters and things like that. These do three wounds apiece. Okay. And then all sorts of special abilities and things like that that really gets in the oh, some craziness. It actually and the, it puts his mount up here as well. Oh, you see that? Yeah, there's yeah. a door guard, you know, his door guard. blazing hooves. He's got the, the fire horse, basically. Heck yeah. Um, he also has four attacks. He hits on threes, wounds on threes. Wow. Uh, one damage, no rend. Okay. Um, so, simple. There is no weapon That's, That, that was skill. pretty easy. There is no strength. It seems stuff. pretty easy. It literally, can I get one of these for 40k? Wouldn't that be that oh, people would lose their mind? <laughs> All right, and then it goes into his ability. Everybody's going to put in the comments like, yo, seriously, don't do that. Don't, don't do say that. that. <laughs> don't say that. I don't know, man. It's less thinking. I like it. If you guys remember, like, before Arcane had, like, two pages of rules. Yeah, so he did. Now he has half a page. Yeah. So did he lose all his special stuff? No. Uh, he has the Eye of, of Shirian, which he had before. Uh, so in your Hero Face, roll a dice. Uh, basically, you get to add some stuff. Uh, you make an opponent, you know, re-roll some dice. Really good. So these are basically their special abilities. Special abilities. He gets, you know, bonuses to his armor. Command ability, the he, thing. He can uh, at negate. The start of the phase. No, no, he can negate mortal wounds. Like, okay. He's pretty, pretty survivable. Um, magic. He has, you know, basically says he knows arcane bolt and mystic shield. Okay. So just that was the, easy. The normal ones. So he's a caster too. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a spell guy. Um, he's great. He's a great general. Uh, but as you can see, it's really easy to use. And then there's something about this keyword thing. So I guess if you take him in some war, some other war scrolls, he yeah, it affects. This is basically their attempt at universal special rules. I yeah, feel like this tells you everything that he's a part of. Okay, he's, he's a hero. He's a wizard. His or affected are, by. Yeah, this is also something for like their their PDFs for you to find and, and, and all the search keys. Okay, to, to find him as well. Well, I'm definitely gonna download that new app that's coming out that has all the war scrolls on it. It's gonna make it super easy. To I got so much to read at night now. Oh my goodness. 
It's going to be fun. Oh, no doubt. This is great. This is so simple. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sold. I mean, I, I, I love this. I want to I want to I want to play. So that's our review. I mean, it, it didn't even take, you know, it took one 27, 28 minute video. And normally we takes one of that just to go through half of a Space Marine Codex. So, uh, <laughs> so you kind of know I'm, I'm a keep it simple, stupid kind of guy. Cause I'm always doing something all the time, but uh, I tell you what, you know, it's, it's a, it's a refreshing departure from Warhammer fantasy. I feel like, so I'm all for it. Now I know a lot of people out there are hating. They got a lot of time to invest in, in time and money invested in their hobby and sure rightly they should be but you know there's oh well we are podcast we are at uh, ground zero here for a cat battle we're being attacked yep we're under attack apparently they have uh, fantasy armies as well um, <laughs> you know I get it you know and I feel bad but you know there's other opportunities out there you can check out Mantic stuff they got a lot of cool things going on with the Kings of War 2.0 if you want to push those blocks around the table no doubt if you're nervous though like just try it out like this game yeah, is, play a game pick up your mind you already have models play the just vocal minority is on the internet and I tell you what like I don't listen to that stuff but I tell you what going through this and reading these rules it seems pretty it seems pretty easy it's very straightforward um, like literally you play whatever you play pick up your lizardmen pick up your skeletons throw them on the field they're all there roll some dice they literally go GW get your get your war scrolls and play yep I'm up for it alright well thanks for uh, thanks for walking us through this Austin gotcha appreciate though. it alright guys that's it for this one alright well that's it the thrilling conclusion the one parter for the new age of Sigmar now, like I said it's super simple rules very very easy to get into there was a cat on my lap uh and it's super easy to get into and you know it just it just seems fun like this this whole thing seems fun and i'm fired up about it I, you know again i get to play a lot of you out there i put a lot of time and effort into warhammer fantasy battles it's it's tough to deal with chains i totally sympathize with you because i tell you what if i had fantasy i would still play age of sigmar but i would ocd like change all my bases and i would be totally ocd about it so i I get, I get it, and I am, I am super sorry that that is the way it is. But I tell you what, playing some Age of Sigmar, it's gonna be fun. It's give it a chance, roll some dice, get some like-minded people that you know aren't you know win at all cost players, and I guarantee you guys, you will have some fun if you try it out. Because I am, I am sad that I just don't have the time right now to get to it and roll some dice myself uh, until this weekend. So. I'm definitely looking forward to that, and I think it's I think it's going to be a great game. I am definitely super excited about the new Age of Sigmar in general. And these War Scrolls are cool. You know, they're coming out with an app where you can just download it all, and make your armies and everything, and you know, good to go. Just knock it all out. And the sky's the limit with these things. You can make formations. You can make all sorts of stuff. So it's it's a very exciting time. I feel like again, you know, I I understand that there is some reservations um, on existing players, and you know, I totally realize that. But you know, just give it a chance. You got your models. You know, you might as well do something with them, or you can always run on over to Mantic, like we were saying, pick up pick up the new uh, you know 2.0 Kings of War and go that route too if you want to do that mass battle stuff. But I don't know. I just I just want to try it. I just want to try it. It looks exciting. I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Give it a chance, guys. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So that's it for this one. I will get on off here. Make sure you head on over to the Long War. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and now exclusive member discounts. Become a veteran of the Long War today.